Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's video, I thought we'd go ahead and start looking at some of the new things around Power Apps, Flow, CDM, kind of the new buzzwords that you're really hearing specifically with the upcoming launch of Dynamics 365. And so, you know, the concept being with, with Power Apps, and we're not going to dive super in-depth, we'll do a few different videos on, on some of the different concepts, but obviously the concepts with Power Apps being that if you have a specific targeted kind of line of business application that you want to run internally, you can create and spin this application up in very little time with very little or no code in most cases that could connect to either the common data model or could connect to you know a, a data source such as CRM or AX or something to that nature. And so what I'd like to do is just kind of give you an overview of you know the general concepts of the application and how to set some of the basics up. So if you haven't used Power Apps before, there's a couple of ways that you can actually get into the application. The first way would be to go to powerapps.microsoft.com and actually sign in and, and create and, and associate it with your Office 365 account. Now keep in mind that this feature is in preview, so this isn't necessarily anything that's supported in a production environment, but it is nice to at least see some of the options around it. The other option would be once you have it associated with your Office 365 account, you would be able to then basically go in and click the Power Apps icon inside Office 365. 365, which is going to take you to your Power Apps area. Now, within your Power Apps area, this is going to default you to the home screen that's going to show you any apps that you've created. This is also going to show you uh, several sample apps that you could work with if you wanted to go in and just get kind of an idea on what those particular concepts are. This is also going to show you and access, in most cases, your personal CDM that you'll have all of your individual entities and items associated with it. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time on the CDM and, and, and the concepts around it in this particular video. We'll explore those maybe in another video but it does use the CDM for those personal items. If you're trying to break it down by a specific item that you want to work with, you know, you can browse through and obviously these are any of the specific apps that we've created specific to the application. These are any entities that we would have within this situation and these are basically entities associated with your CDM. So this is where if I wanted to add some custom tables, I wanted to add some or some custom entities and some custom fields to be able to work with this, this is where I would now have the capabilities to be able to do that and once that information is is available it would show up in here Connections are going to show you the different data sources that this particular environment or specifically your Office 365 account is associated with. Obviously, there will be a default common data model for your account that you can work with, but you'll also have connections to you know, different environments. So in this case, you can see I have a couple of different connections to some CRM instances, as well as some connections to some Office 365 instances, which gives me the capabilities to work through it and basically connect this app to other applications based upon my specific needs. I also can work with any flows. So again, you'll have a scenario where maybe you might have a flow that's going to be triggered from inside a Power App. This is where I could create these individual flows. And as I create these flows, these flows would now be available for me to add to specific buttons in the application. And that's one of the things we'll show you in kind of this video is we'll create just a very simplistic app. We'll connect it to a flow and then we'll process through some information. If you're looking to actually go through and have a flow that connects to a local scenario, you could install a gateway and this would allow you to connect to on-premises data. We're not going to necessarily work through that at this point, but it is something to kind of keep in mind. And then you also have the capability once you have, you know, these apps created, the other concept around this is being able to share these apps and, and, and the, the items within these apps to other users who might be using them. Now, when we talk about power apps, we're really talking about looking at a very specific business case application that you want to work with, something where you want to capture a specific item and be able to bring it into the application without having to install like the entire Mocha client. The nice thing about the Power Apps is once you've you know created your app, there are apps available for you know, iOS and Android that you can go out, download, and then have access to all of your individual apps. When you click on new to create an app, you have two options here. You can use Power App Studio for the web, or you can use Power Power App Studio for window. I would really recommend using Power App Studios for Windows. And the reason behind that is that's going to have quite a few more options at your disposal as far as design elements and, and creating the individual things that you want to work with. So the general landscape that you're going to see over here on the application is 
the screen itself. And so this, the app will be broken down into different screens. So if you think about it in the concept of me maybe working with a, a lead generation app or something like that, I'm going to go into that app and I'm going to have all my available leads that I can see within that data source of listed within that item. And as I drill into one of those individual items, it's going to open up another screen inside the app that might be the the read the, the the read view screen where I can basically see the data but I can't necessarily interact with it and then there might be an edit screen where I can actually go in edit the information and there might be a new screen and I can actually using different commands and different controls from inside the app I have the capabilities to then control how users are going to navigate through that as they're moving forward over on the side for the individual screen, you'll see that I have layouts available that I can use to determine how I want to organize things based upon the individual type of content that I'm going to work with. And then up here on the toolbar, you can see that I have different themes and items available that I could apply to this to, to really make it stand out and be my own. The other thing that you're going to see in here is depending upon what it is, you're going to see different formula or expression builders. And so one of the things that you'll see as you experiment with it a little bit is this is where you're going to control maybe how you filter data sources within the power app maybe how you define what specific information is going to be displayed in here if you have third-party information or items from another application that you want to incorporate into this so you can trigger a flow or work with a flow this is where you'll be able to build that expression and based upon what you have selected inside this individual item you will see specific things that you can do so you in here because I'm obviously working with the screen itself I have more items around background images and image positions, but I have you know, a ton of different options available as far as inserting different controls, inserting different buttons, text boxes, uh, different forms of media, image files, those types of items as I want to work through. I can work through the content so I can edit the individual data sources that I might be working with or if I have media or item from other areas I want to work through. I have an action item to define what I want to do when specific things occur within the application. And so these are all different things that as you're editing and working through the application, you can now start to define how you want those elements to be displayed. So let's just look at this from a very simplistic scenario. Normally, if I was going to spin this up, I would more than likely either, you know, connect to my CDM or connect to Dynamics 365, or I'm sorry, my Dynamics CRM, something like that. But in this case, I'm going to just go ahead and keep an empty app and just kind of type in tip of the day sample. So that's going to be the title of this app. Very simplistic for purposes of today. I'm going to click on insert. I'm going to then define the type of control that I want to insert. In this case, I'm going to insert a text box. So I'll click on text box. I'll position the text box where I want it to work within the, within the item itself. I'll actually come in here. I can size it to whatever specific size I want. And then I can define what specific you know text I want to display inside this text box. Maybe in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and define this as topic. And then if I wanted to actually add another area where I could go in and enter information or do more like a text input type situation. This is where I could go in and choose text input, position the item and size the item the way, I, the way that I want. And then over here, you'll see this is that expression builder. So this is where I could define if there was default text that I wanted to have into this as far as putting information in. But more specifically, if I had this tied to a data source, this might be where I would add some of my filtering K expressions to define what specific record or field is going to show up inside of that text box. The other thing that you'll see up here at the top is I have items as far as the name of the item. So if I'm going to be using this in an expression, which we will actually show you here in a few seconds, I could actually type in here a, a more specific name for this item. And then if I wanted to have, you know, tool tips and text boxes or text hints based upon how people hover over this, I would be able to do that. Now, in purposes of time, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll skip through here real quick, and then we'll show you what it's going to look like once we kind of have things created. So now that I have all my buttons and input controls completed. Now I'm going to go ahead and insert a button so I can actually initiate and do something. Now normally, like I said, I would have this connected to a data source of some kind and then probably just facilitate creating the record in CRM. But in this case, maybe I want to fire off like an approval email to a manager. And then once that manager approves that email, then I want it to actually go ahead and create the record inside you know, Dynamic CRM or whatever application I would be using. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and insert a button. 
and position the button wherever I want in the application. So just kind of position it right over here. And then I have several different options I can do underneath action. If I wanted to you know, navigate to another screen, so if this was an application where I had multiple screens and now I wanted to navigate to another screen, I could do that. Or if this was a situation, maybe I want to provide some type of functionality when somebody selects the button. In this case, I want to go ahead and initiate a flow. So I'm going to click on flows. And then what I would do in this scenario is then I would be able to go ahead and create or associate it with a flow. Now I already have a flow created that I'm going to use with this, but for purposes of time, I'm just going to hop into my existing flows and open that up so you can see the elements that make that up. So I have a scenario where this is actually being initiated from Power App. So there's a command inside flow that says, okay, when there's a Power App, click, I want you to go ahead and do something. And in this case, it's going to go ahead and send an email or an approval email from a system standpoint to this email address. Now I could dynamically populate that. That's one of the cool things about Flow is I would have the ability to be able to go ahead and dynamically populate what you know how that email address is captured. Maybe it's coming from the app. But I can see as a standard approval request option that has kind of items for approve and reject. And if I wanted to see additional options, I can see that down here I actually have information in the e email coming out where is populating you know the topic of the lead and, and the last name of the lead now in this case I'm going to go ahead and move down to the next item on the list which is just a condition that says once the option inside that email has been selected as approved then you're going to go ahead and create a new record in CRM and now from a CRM perspective I can come in here and I can define what specific fields on that item I want to work with now you see on my power app I have many more fields than what you see here but for interest of time we'll just go ahead and just kind of facilitate what what you have at this point but I could go down into my additional options and now you'll see that since it's linked directly to CRM I have all the additional fields and items that you would normally see with a CRM record from that standpoint. So I can come down into here, kind of look at what specific field I would potentially want to use in this situation to find what that field is going to be. And then I could go ahead and use that as part of my flow as I'm moving forward. Now, in this case, like I said, I already have the information in there. So we'll just go ahead and leave it at that. I will close this flow and go back into my Power App. So now I'm going to associate this with this create lead flow and it'll add that item to my flow and it'll show me up here that, okay, this is the information that you need in order to define this. And so I have to basically map this to the appropriate fields in my app. In this case, I know that I have a field called topic. And so as I start to type in topic, I can see the topic populates. I know that there's topic is a text field. So I'm going to define it to use the text value inside topic. And then I just separate my arguments with commas and I would go into the next one. So I also have a field called last. Actually, let's just change this real quick here. Let's change this to last name just to be safe. Go back into my button, specify this as last name, and the text from last name. Now I'm going to close my expression, and at this point my flow is ready to, to use or to test. Now in this case I'm just going to go ahead and just preview it inside the app so you can see kind of how it works. I would go ahead and hit preview, it'll open up my item, I would enter something in in the topic. I would push my button to submit it. This will fire off the action, which would now fire off an email that inside my Outlook email, I would now be able to collect and see. So that's gonna do it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed our intro look into how to work with power apps and flow. Obviously this is an ever evolving product and as new items come out and new different data sources and connections and more items around the common data model, we'll definitely do more and more of these as we move forward. But again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this is Derek saying thanks for watching everybody. Take care and have a good one.